Hey there, so you wanted to know how to make an aesthetic spread, right? So the first step in making an aesthetic spread is defining what exactly aesthetic means to you. Does it mean minimalistic, maximalistic, neutral colors or vibrant colors, expressive or not, etc. For me, it's a bit maximalist, popping colors, a bit expressive, a journal kind of vibe and experimental, kind of like my literal bullet journal that you're seeing right now. Kind of like adding different ingredients to get different flavors in food, you decide how your flavor or aesthetic is like. And without any further ado, I'm going to share my tips and tricks which helped me make one of the most aesthetic spreads in my entire like life until now. Also remember that you can use these tips separately as sketchbook ideas. Alright, the first and most important one is composition. Like even if you drew so many pretty things on the page and even applied all the fun little tricks that I'm going to be giving you in a moment, your spread is not going to look aesthetic simply because it's not presented well and all those nice things will go unnoticed. So first and foremost, make sure you have a decent composition. This takes only like five minutes. Just give yourself five minutes and you'll just practicing this in your sketchbook can also just make it more intuitive to you as time goes. So the first one that I like to use is the rule of thirds. I think it's kind of common, but this is on the screen for you. Basically, the focal points are the intersections of the lines and the other ones are the big medium small tiny ratio that i love to use basically the most important one or the focal point of the spread is going to be the biggest drawing on the page the second most important becomes the medium the fillers become the small and the decorations or tiny accents become the tiny okay now if you're confused about what should be your biggest drawing or your focal point don't worry i've got something it's what i call landscaping and landscape color so they're actually two different tricks anyway the first one is to make the focal point or the biggest drawing a landscape and this doesn't just help you in your landscape drawing skills but also just fills up a huge area with like a nice pretty aesthetic thing to look at and yeah it's just kind of looks good so you can choose any landscape you want it can be as simple or as detailed as you want and if you want you could kind of go for a landscape that has more sky than the land so that you can just paint a nice little gradient or fluffy clouds or something and the rest is just a bit of land to like you know just show and make it a landscape so actually the one that i'm using is something that i just found on a random samsung lock screen i i saw it and i was like i need to draw this so then i had just taken a photo of it and i decided to add it into my spread today so i'm using watercolors and just laying out the base layers and just going for it so for this spread a trick that i used is i just decided that i wanted my landscape to be the biggest focus or like the biggest painting and i placed it at one of the focal points or like exactly where two focal points are and it just took up that whole section and then the next tip is to basically place other characters or drawings around the landscape and in a big medium small tiny ratio so that you can you know have everything fit in nicely Okay, now the second tip is to draw a themed guilty pleasure. What I mean by that is basically draw what you like the most. For me, it's a character and I basically uh, designed her or drew her according to the landscape, kind of giving me a mountain vibes, a mountain girl vibes because the landscape's like that. And now this is the most fun tip is what I call scape colors. Basically, you choose the color palette of your landscape for the rest of the spread and even the character or the guilty pleasure that you're going to draw. Okay, now listen carefully because I'm about to tell you a tip that makes coloring a whole lot easier. So if you want your drawing to look a bit more dynamic and vibrant, I recommend you use the technique that I'm using on the left. So basically what you're going to do is just flip the way the colors are arranged or make them opposites. So in the landscape, I have my oranges on top and the greens on the bottom. And on the character, I have the oranges on the bottom and the greens and the purples on top. So this basically makes them, you know, con contrast with each other and kind of make them stand out even more they're complementing each other and it's just a lot more dynamic it's what i call opposites the cross sign is just to show how the colors are going it's not the wrong method and now if you're someone who doesn't want something as dynamic or as eye-catching as that you can just use the second method basically you just apply the colors the same way it's on the landscape onto the character but of course you can have some variations i changed her corset to the blue and i kept it the same basically because i just think it looks better so one drawing and two colorways or two emotions that you can express with that so you know play around with it and just don't let it get your head too much because you know if you're doing only one page this is the formula to go you can just make something look good like this but i'm doing two pages so like there are other colors and drawings and paintings going to come and other little details and so many more things to go so 
you know, it will all kind of balance out each other. And I'm saying that because I was skeptical about, you know, painting the character using the opposite method. Because I'm like, it's going to be, you know, too vibrant, too standing out. I'm not sure if I like it. But it kind of, you know, I just trusted the process. That's the fourth tip. To trust the process, do things one at a time. And just, you know, just focus on what you're doing right now. And then slowly build it up. Okay, now the fifth tip is to use mixed media. So you can see my brushes, the watercolor, the random pieces of paper, which I'm going to talk about soon. And now I'm just, you know, whipping out my markers. So I'm just kind of, you know, using whatever medium is comfortable for me. And also it's just fun. And also you can obtain so much more texture and like just interest in your drawing or like painting with different media so use mixed media you know use that oil pastel or that color pencil you haven't touched okay now the fifth tip is to capture your ideas now this is not just for making a sketchbook spread but also in general you might get an idea when you're you know in the bus or at school or at work and you know when that idea comes just jot it down somewhere just write it down you might even get one while you're making the spread you might get like oh this is a little cool portrait that i could do or a cool little drawing that i could do you know, draw that in there very lightly or just, you know, write it down somewhere so that you can, you know, implement it. Now, now you might already have figured out the sixth tip from what I've been doing on screen so far. It's basically to do collages or just, you know, use pictures and nice little text or whatever from catalogs and magazines. Use those magazines that are lying around in your house. They have such nice pictures and designs that are already designed by designers and people who have designed the magazine. So it's just another nice way to make your sketchbook spread look more aesthetic. It's also just so much fun cutting out pictures and, you know, cutting them in really weird ways and adding different rigs and tears and like holes. Trust me, it's going to come in use and I'll tell you as we progress in the video. Okay, now the seventh tip and the third drawing that I'm going to be doing is familiarity and unconventionality. Basically what I mean by that is, again, draw something you're familiar with because that's how you make things fun. You know, I like drawing portraits, so I drew one and I haven't drawn like a big portrait alone in a long time. So I drew that, but I also gave her like a slightly, you know, unconventional hairstyle and like I put like stars on her face and... What's going to be really unconventional is I'm going to color her face in with like unconventional skin colors like skin colors are peach and stuff usually I'm going to use like greens and you know oranges and pinks and stuff and I'm coloring her hair in with like this midnight blue and yeah just you know experiment you know give her that green lipstick and all of that and this is how it turned out. Like, I've never done something like this before, but I just experimented with those blues, greens, and everything in her cheeks, and I just made sure the values are correct, and it turned out to be okay. Now, another trick is that you can actually alter the colors in your cutouts or collages using alcohol markers. So for this picture, I, I felt like it was too desaturated, I wanted those purples to be popping a bit more, so I just went over with my purple marker and did that. Okay, now the eighth tip is to fill in what you see. So this is where the little ridges and tears and crazy patterns you made in your collages collages or cutouts are going to come in handy. So basically they have a negative space around them that forms little shapes or something. And so I saw a straight up slight profile of maybe a girl screaming there. So I just straight up went, to, went ahead and added that. I didn't like, you know, detail it too much i just wanted to add it there purely for the sake of adding and because you know that picture was forming that shape okay so the ninth tip is what i call fantasy objects which are basically objects but like you know with a different purpose or something out of the box so i chose a vintage object here kind of like a vintage teacup because you know i just love vintage stuff they're beautifully designed and everything and my spread or the theme of the spread is like kind of like mountain vibes you know kind of it so i made some mountain vines kind of like flowing out of the cup instead of any kind of tea or any sort of beverage so um, i think that looks really cool and i made sure the vines were like flowing into the other drawing so this is a tenth tip that you can do is actually you know have some flowing elements or make sure some drawings are tilted or angled or just maybe distorted to just kind of add to a movement or dynamics in your spread and the vines that i've drawn here like do that beautifully 
and this is something that comes along with the 10th tip that is if you haven't noticed already make sure your elements or your drawings are overlapping and not tangential to each other like you know overlapping stuff is what you know makes collages looks good and even the aesthetic spread look a bit aesthetic so make sure to do that Okay, so when you're done with all these kind of drawings and applying these tips, you will get a spread that is very close to being completed. Okay, now the 11th tip is what I call food and fun. I don't know who doesn't love food. I mean, we all need to eat anyway. So what you're going to do is choose a fruit or a vegetable that comes to your mind based on the color palette that you're seeing. And remember the drawings under these tips come under the small and the tiny category, which basically just fill up space and decorate the areas. So I basically saw this blueberry cheesecake tart thing and I knew I had to draw it so I just ended up searching for you know mountain foods because you know my theme is kind of like mountain girl you know kind of vibe thing and that led to me seeing some sort of a rustic honey cake and that led to me googling that and I found this and I'm like okay this is it I've got to draw it it has purples and everything so I just made the blueberries a bit more purplish than blue and uh, I drew that little cake there. Okay, now the 12th tip is to finally add in your color palette in little circles or squares or however you want it. But make sure the kind of small and kind of like just show the viewer your color palette and it kind of just adds to the aestheticness of the spread. And the 13th tip along with the color palette is to color block in stuff. So choose a neutral color or like a complementary color that goes with your drawings and choose do it as the background of certain drawings that you want to stand out. So I really like the character and I wanted her to stand out and pop a bit more so I just took this olive green that I really like and I just went around it. At first I was skeptical but I don't know it just somehow tied everything in in this really warm and really green and mountainy way that I wanted. So yeah make sure to color block things that you want to stand out and this really helps to fill in the little spaces in your spread and even you know highlight things you want to highlight. And now the 14th tip is to finally add little details and you know finish up stuff add those highlights and all of that. And the 14th tip is really just to have patience because anything good takes time, anything good takes effort. So just wait for it, you know, just put in that extra effort, add those details, highlights, you know, go in with your gel pens or the glitter or whatever you want. Okay, now the 15th tip is to add some fun washi tape, preferably with some, I don't know, gold or glitter on them. But, you know, not everyone has this. Even I didn't have it until, like, this week when I recently got them. It's, like, my first, like, proper set of washi tape. So, you need not do this if you don't have it. You could also just draw some fun patterns because, let me tell you, the tiny patterns and accents that you make really make the spread more cohesive. So, you know, go ahead and make those patterns if you don't have the washi tape. I mean, who's stopping you? Okay, now the 16th tip is reflections and quotes. So basically, write some quotes that inspired you along the process or write some your own reflections of what you thought about the process and what you learned or what your motto was throughout the spread. So for me, it was like, just do it. Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. So, you know, I was kind of really skeptical about this spread. I've never made like such an aesthetic spread in my life before. So I was like, eh, but it turned out good. I believed I can and this is what happened so hey guys my name is rose bj and this was my attempt at making a spread and the things that i learned from it and the tips and tricks that i shared with you i will be showing you it's beautiful reveal in just a second but basically if you're interested in my art videos and the tips and tricks that i share and my art journey make sure to subscribe i post whenever i'm free okay so this is the final reveal I can't wait. This is like all the effort and everything kind of coming full circle. Okay, one, two, three. And I'm just kind of removing everything. Oh my god, like, look at that. I'm just so excited. Like, it looks so good. I, di I did not imagine anything like this in my head. I had completely like different and even like a vague idea. Like, like I... I just, I have no words. Um, the landscape turned out really nice. I can't believe I actually drew that landscape. And everything kind of just, you know, fell into place. I just trusted the process and things turned out fine. I love that little cheesecake thing there. And I like this portrait. I was, I didn't like that either in the beginning, but I just kept adding onto it and everything. And this random sketch of a girl screaming on this coat that says, whether you believe you can or you can't, you are right. So I just want you to remember that, you know, just believe in yourself because it's, 
you know, whether you believe you can or you can't, you are right. And uh, just a note, that's not my quote. You know, I don't know whose it is. It's just something that inspired me. So I just wrote it there. And also just do it, you know, just go ahead, open your sketchbook, start drawing and just do it. And this is the final reveal. I am so happy with it, you know. So what I want you to take away from this video is basically I give you all the tips and tricks and everything. But what you've got to do is, you know, use all of that according to your interests and your definition of aesthetic you know basically kind of like adding different spices and food you add the different ingredients and spices and flavors according to what is your favorite flavor so if you think that spread was aesthetic and you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button and comment down what you think and what is your favorite tip so remember to believe in yourself trust the process and actually apply all those tips that i said because you know you just watching this video is not going to just magically make an aesthetic spread for you but yeah my name is rose bj and if you're interested in following my art journey make sure to subscribe i post whenever i'm free because i'm still in school and i just have a lot of crazy things going on and make sure to check out these videos if you want to know more about my process and learn more tips and tricks